Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This Thatter the Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month. We'll video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash Capes and Lunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Jam DeMatteis, and you are listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of X-Men Classics. I am Phil. Joining me, as always, once again, for part two, it is Al Claus himself. <laughs> Just in the Al swooping back in. In the magic report. That's here, right. Okay. Right, kids. We're going to wrap up our two-part Wolverine uh, little mini-arc here. This time from Wolverine 21 through 23. Finally, you'll get your answers. But what is in that cocaine? Yes. What is in that cocaine? We will find out. It's so funny. It's like Geist, the old, the old man cyborg. It's like usually old people are like afraid of technology. <laughs> he decided to go the other way with it. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, anything to stay alive. There, if somebody... Yeah, the self-preservation. All right, should we jump in? Yes. All right. Another great cover. Oh yeah, all all these were good covers. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, this one is like yeah, just Wolverine's face. Yeah. All right. He's, he's got the coke rage. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Everyone loves cocaine. <laughs> Poor Charlie, you never knew that. <laughs> I got last you, cheese. All right. Uh, Wolverine number 21 from February 1990, Battleground, uh, which is like last time, writer Archie Goodwin, penciler John Byrne, inker Claus Jansen, colorist Glennis Oliver, letterer Jim Novak, and editors Bob Harris and Daryl Edelman. Uh, at the Australian headquarters of the X-Men, Psylocke attempts to contact Wolverine telepathically. She tells her teammates Havoc, Dazzler, and Colossus that she is unable to pinpoint his location to Central America. She is able to pinpoint his location in Central America. However, she cannot contact his mind and tells her friends that he is out of her power to help. So yeah, kids, this is direct, this is this is around the uh, X Men two hundred and fifty because yes, Storm's gone. You know, they I think they think she's dead, but meanwhile, she's a prison of n- nanny and orphan maker. Right, they're doing weird experiments on her. Press her to a child. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The X Men I think are about to travel to the Savage Land, and then. When they come home, they get ambushed by the Reavers. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when things go from bad to worse. Which I think it's the, I think it's in the last issue of this one uh, where they say, oh, this takes place before Uncanny X Men. Was it 251 or 252? Would, you know. Oh, yes. Yeah. One of these that, issues. That's when Wolverine worse. returns and gets, yeah, gets ambushed by the Reavers. You know, they, yeah. they cover with him on the giant. Uh, uh, yes. Did, yeah. Yeah. On the on the giant S and M cross kid, yeah, that that that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I think I sent that picture to all like you, Russell, and Lil that one time. You know, it's like uh, somebody had like one of those S and M like you know they get <laughs> racks in their room, and it said, "Oh man, she must be a huge X Men fan." <laughs> Who wants to volunteer to be the Reavers? <laughs> I think she has a whole drawer full of Reaver, Reavers next to her. <laughs> Battery's not included. Uh, you know, you know what little Telfire's trying to create. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, Lubricated eels are the best. <laughs> 
that army of sex robots low with his room. I wonder if my wrist is ready for that. <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, in Terra Verde, Geist and Caridad soldiers find the crashed helicopter and begin trying to track down Wolverine, Bandera, Sister Salvation, and Roughhouse, who have escaped from them. Not far away, Roughhouse attempts to keep Wolverine, who has been drugged with Geist's experimental cocaine, from lashing <laughs> out. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's never good. Experimental cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone loves cocaine. Well, it, uh, that combination with Wolverine too is especially oh, yeah. volatile. <laughs> oh yeah, he could always he could always laps into a berserker frenzy on a good day. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Rough house. It doesn't take much. <laughs> no, no. Uh, uh, Rough house holds Logan still long enough for Sister Salvation to use her healing touch to heal Wolverine a bit. She tells him that his best bet for survival and fighting off the effects of Geist cocaine would be to surrender. Mm-hmm. Her her healing touch, uh, <laughs> as Loth Hellfire put, puts it, quote unquote, post nut clarity. <laughs> it's it's a miracle. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I know exactly what she's talking about. <laughs> Uh, 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 uh. Oh. <laughs> uh, I know every time she says that I'm like mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, she tells him his best bet for survival uh, and fighting off the effects of guys cocaine would be to surrender Wolverine refuses to do so and they continue on their path to escape not far behind Geist and his men soldier on to try and capture them while President Caridad searches in the air by helicopter Bandera Lee is leading her rebels as well when they come across an army of natives armed with their weapons poised to kill. As Geist continues to track the escapees, Roughhouse and the others duck under a partially uprooted tree in a swamp. There, Roughhouse tries to keep Wolverine contained so his drug-induced mania doesn't reveal their location. Wolverine begins to hallucinate and envisions himself fighting through an army of Nazis during World War II, which he probably did. Uh, during that, but during the battle, he easily kills the soldiers and destroys one of their tanks. Although he is caught in its explosion, as they slowly, re- as he slowly revives, he is visited by a vision of Sister Salvation, who heals him and tells him he must go alone to the castle that overlooks the town. She tells him that he needs to be his own healing factor. Uh, in the real world, Roughhouse wakes up to find that Sister Salvation is using her healing powers on Logan again. She asks Roughhouse to help her contain him because she believes another violent spell is about to hit. In Wolverine's hallucination, he gets to the castle and overlooks the German town then finds Geist shaving Adolf Hitler and giving Hitler some advice on his latest test subjects. Wolverine bursts in and attacks Hitler and is surprised when the Nazi leader turns into snow. Attacking Geist, the creature inside his body reveals itself, transforming into a giant mass of a creature calling itself Spore. Spore promises to tell Wolverine its origins before consuming him and then envelops Wolverine's body. In the real world, a storm has hit the jungle and Rough House is finding it difficult to keep Wolverine contained and notes that the feral mutant is worse than ever. Sister Salvation realizes that the only way she can help Logan now is to hold him and tosses her nun's hood to the ground. Deep in his hallucination, Wolverine learns that Spore was a creature created by the Deviants to be their ultimate weapon against their foes, the Eternals, a living disease to consume them all. The Eternals would have a hard time fighting off Spore, but the creature would meet its end when the Celestials would return to the Earth. Spore would face them and be seemingly destroyed. However, his essence would end up in the soil that would ultimately become President Caridad's cocaine plantation. His is being called uh, his being being cultivated into the drug spore would seek to find the ideal host body in order to be reborn but until recently he has yet to find one strong enough to survive with its origins explained spore then attempts to absorb wolverine and use him as a host body remembering what sister salvation told him wolverine wheels his healing factor represented by duplicates of himself to appear and ultimately purge spore from his system Waking from his hallucination, Wolverine thanks Sister Salvation for her help in healing him and getting him through the worst. She tells him that she couldn't abandon anyone who suffered. Just then, they are found by Geist and Caridad, who thanks Sister Salvation for leaving a trail for them, holding up her nun's hood. 
When Logan asks her how she could betray their position to Caridad and his men, she explains that Carib Caridad has her son. Yeah. And then they and then it doesn't even say in the hallucination it's it, 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 she kisses him. So you're like, did that really mm. happen? But then they kind of hint that it kind of did maybe in the real world that she did kiss him. Yeah. And some insinuation that it did happen for real. Yeah. So yes, kids, the healing hands weren't enough. She had to use her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> That's the salvation I'm talking about. Hey, man. How is it? <laughs> Well, no, she didn't do that with Rough House, though. Really? <laughs> I would think for a little uh, hairy Canadian. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thoughts, Justin? I, this was the one that kind of made me think, holy cow, I love the story. Mm -hmm. Because we get the origin of Spore here. Yeah, the Spore thing ramped it up a notch for me. I was like, yeah. oh, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. This whole hallucination sequence where... He's in uh, Nazi Germany, and he sees Geist shaving Hitler and all this stuff. And then it suddenly escalates from there to to Spore. And then suddenly on the next page, there's the the deviants and the celestials I and stuff. Know. I'm like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> like, this is a Wolverine boy. Where did the celestials come from? <laughs> I know. Well, that escalated quickly. <laughs> I know. I mean, we got, like I said, we're going all over the Marvel Universe. We're talking about Daredevil, a fight with Daredevil, yeah. and now we're talking the Tiger Dark Shark. Deviants. Yeah, yeah. A Namor villain, Tiger Shark, and then and then the Celestials, and and Spore was actually a deviant, a living deviant super weapon that was devised to kill the Eternals millions of years ago. It's brilliant. I love it. And, and the fact that it was eradicated by the Celestials, but his yeah. essence still kind of remained in the soil deep enough so that eventually it would get tilled up and like combined with something else in this case. So now okay, he's, which is now, he, I'll say, now he's for the, the villain who is living cocaine, cocaine, <laughs> living cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's brilliant. I think it's oh, exceptional. Oh, yeah. yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm surprised they didn't use Spore more. I mean, you know, and all their, mm. you know, anti drug PSA stuff. And you know, it's just like, <laughs> right? like, oh, yes, he is pure evil. He's like, he, yeah. living drugs. Yeah. You'll get corrupted by an, an evil spore from space if you do coke. Don't do drugs, kids. You'll become an evil monster. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I love the scene. Okay. I love the scene too, where where the the guards are are hunting for them. Yes, and uh, Roughhouse has restrained Logan because he's in the midst of a berserker rage, and you can just see in his eyes like the barely like restrained chaos that's going on under there. It's fantastic. Yeah, I love like Roughhouse is like, covering his mouth in that one panel. Yeah, you just see the one bubble wearing his face like. Yeah. Yeah, you can see his eyes. He's like, he's ready to just lose it. Yeah, it's really great. Shaving Nazis driving me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, wait, we got a comment. Russell now. Okay. Oh, Russell. Hi, Russell. We should have got D E A R tariff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I know that seems like a missed opportunity. In I mean, the we almost did, Russell. In part one, they mentioned you know a fight Daredevil had with so what a guy on this like amped up cocaine. So yeah, a very brief battle with Daredevil. Yeah, so he dropped dead of a heart attack. <laughs> yeah. So yes, Russell, the Deviants created this super cocaine. <laughs> Well, then, with the help of the celestial, yeah, inadvertently, yeah, yes, but yeah, this that little twist made me realize, holy cow, I love this this story. Just went from being cool to like being great. Like, That's what I said. I love the we are we're getting little bits of the Marvel universe intersecting with yeah. this. Thing, yeah, it's nice to see that in a Wolverine book, which, for the most part, I think had been kind of its own thing for Ooh. a while. Like Madripoor was kind of its own section that. Not a whole lot. I mean, you see, you saw other people there from the Marvel Universe, but not as frequently. Yeah, and again, uh, especially the, at this point, because you know the X Men are thought dead and stuff. So, mm, right. 
and then sought legal counsel from Jennifer Walters. <laughs> Poor Cart to get all the space cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, carcass. Yeah. Uh, oh, poor carcass. Everyone loves cocaine. <laughs> oh, but Russell, last episode we did say uh, we're gonna have to do a crossover uh, with Gamma Charge, where we cover yes. the, what is it? Two issues with uh, yes, early in this series, Wolverine and Joe Fix It. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Both in their tuxes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right. Anything else? Should we get to the next one? Yeah, I think we can move on to the next one with another right. hallucinatory sequence opening. Oh my lord! That yeah, that cover. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, Wolverine number twenty-two from March nineteen ninety. Outburst. Uh, looks like same team. Wolverine is dreaming that he is a beast walking along a frozen expanse until he is approached by a vision of. Mariko Yoshida, who raises a sword to strike him dead. However, when the killing blow is landed, Wolverine reverts to human form, and Mariko changes into Sister Salvation, the woman who betrayed him to President Felix Caridad. Wolverine wakes up to pain as he's being put through a round of torture by Caridad and Geist. However, despite the hours of torture, Logan doesn't scream, and eventually Caridad decides to attend to other duties. Going outside to his military training camp, he is confronted by his ex-wife, Sister, Sal Sister Salvation, who demands that he makes good on his promise to bring her to their son, Paulo. He shows her her son for the first time in five years, now a grown man, whom Caridad is training to be an effective soldier. Elsewhere in the camp, Wolverine is locked up in a cell with Rough House, who is chained up and suspended from the ceiling. Roughhouse tells Logan that they use sticks against him and confides in his former enemy that he was abused as a child and that's what made him an angry adult. But that Sister Salvation's healing touch not only cured him of Caridad's cocaine, but also of his inner anger. Wolverine tells him uh, that he should try and, and find it anyway and if they are going to get out of captivity, al of, uh, captivity alive and explains to him that cocaine is tainted by an evil deviant creature called Spore. And that if Spore is revived, there will be no Celestials this time to stop him. Back with Geist, Caridad reflects on the story that Wolverine told of the threat of Spore's influence in the cocaine and expresses his desire to give up on creating a superhero for his country and burn the crop. Geist, not wishing to give up on this endeavor, suggests that a monster can be destroyed because they have Sister Salvation on their side. Outside, Sister Salvation hears from her son that he is not happy to be a soldier and only does it to make his father happy. They are called in the Caridad's bunker, unaware that someone is killing the guards around the base. Inside, Caridad tells his son that he intends to make him a hero as Geist loads up a dart gun loaded with the spore-tainted cocaine. In the cell, Wolverine goads Roughhouse to use his strength to break free of his bonds, and he manages to do so when he hears Sister Salvation screaming. After Wolverine is freed, they storm out of the cell and to find the prison deserted. Recovering his costume, Wolverine and Roughhouse go outside to find all the guards have been killed by arrows. Rushing in the Caridad's bunker, they find that Sister Salvation is fighting with her husband upon learning that he intends to inject his son with the tainted cocaine. Geist attempts to shoot the boy with the drugs anyway when Wolverine and Roughhouse burst in. Wolverine deflects the darts with his claws. When it turns out they are redirected at Caridad, he stumbles, uh, he stumbles towards his wife, asking her to heal him, but she refuses. Geist tries to escape by jumping out of the hole in the bunker cut by Wolverine and lands right in the middle of La Bandera's attack on the base with her amassed rebels and the local natives who easily overpower Caridad's military. Inside the bunker, Caridad begins to feel spore spreading through his body and convinced that he is strong enough to become a superhero himself, shocks everyone when he turns his own dart gun on himself and unloads it into his stomach, injecting himself with even more of the drug. Caridad's body is soon consumed by Spore, who is now reborn. As he begins to grow, La Bandera and her rebels break into the bunker and Spore turns his attention on them. Wolverine orders them to flee as he grabs a flamethrower. Attempting to set Spore ablaze it appears to be a false hope as the creature shrugs off the flames and then envelops Wolverine in its body mass. There's our cliffhanger ending, Phil. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah what'd you think of this one? This one is, uh, yeah, it's really amping up the action here, and it's just like yeah. 
once again, because it always happens every so often, everybody gets in trouble trying to duplicate that damn like super soldier serum that created mm. Steve Rogers and the Captain America. Yes. Yeah, and that's that's kind of a narrative that Caradet repeats throughout these issues oh. is that he he's tired of like his country being looked down upon by everybody else, and he feels that them having superheroes would kind of put them on the map and get them more respect internationally and stuff like that, rather than just being seen as you know some some island that has a, a seedy drug trade on the side oh. that everybody knows about but nobody publicly acknowledges. So, I think that. That was kind of cool because it added another layer to him. Just oh. rather than just him being, you know, this this uh, drug czar, drug El Presidente type of character. But you kind of want to like shoot for creating your own Iron Man because again, the, trying to create a super soldier never turns. I mean, yeah. that's what Ted Salas was trying to do. Yeah, giant size fan thing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's it's much easier to try to to invent some type of super suit. Yeah. Than it is to try to because you put all that money into one person, although the money and resources into that one person, and then you get nuke. <laughs> exactly. I mean, he was like he was a hopeless drug addict. He was all yeah. pills and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. He even pops some in the in that other issue in the previous episode. He's, mm -hmm. When he's blowing up that little village, he's like, "Give me a red." <laughs> I mean, look where it got him. At by the end, by the end of his life, yeah, he was the uh, his final resting place was on top of Ben Yurick's desk in the bugle. Yeah, yep. Because kids, he was created by well, David Mazzuchelli and Frank. Oh <laughs> yes, Miller. That's right. <laughs> Anytime, like, give me a little mention, Frank Miller. I'm just like, okay, hold on, Justin. I hear you. Yeah. Hit the button. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Got to get that drop ready. <laughs> yes. uh, or, I mean, if it could go, if it goes horribly wrong, then it's your mother's a whore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, tell that the care that son. It's like yeah, your your mother was using. Yeah. She's been using her hands on everybody. She's <laughs> her mouth Making with Wolverine. Her <laughs> mouth with Wolverine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that whole family, man. I don't know. Yeah, it's a little. That family's a little messed up. The whole family can suck it. <laughs> uh. So yeah, super cocaine, but nothing will ever be as good as Mephisto's mushrooms. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Oh. Maybe that wouldn't have had some ancient uh, organic deviant bioweapon in it <laughs> if they had found some mushrooms instead. <laughs> now you just lose your marriage. <laughs> Spider Man joking. Nothing will ever be as good as Mephisto's mushrooms. I'm, so, I'm still sorry about that. That's like, <laughs> it's like Lilith in that Snickers at Wonder Woman Snickers at. Yes. I still can't believe that was almost 20 years ago. Oh my god, 2000. I remember it, it was uh, it? 2007, 2000... 2008. So, I mean, I mean, yeah. we're coming up on it. So, yeah, that's weird. <sighs> I'm like, really? I'm like, they let their, their, like, basically their flagship character sell his, sell his. I mean, I know they wanted to reboot a bunch, but they let their flagship character sell his marriage to the devil. Yeah. Ugh. And again, like, what's Mephisto got to do with Peter Parker? Like seriously, like, why is why is he so invested in Peter Parker? In well, Peter the, Parker's life. Well, what um uh, towards uh, oh, what's his face is run? Uh, was it Nick Spencer's run? Like towards the end, he was he was trying to wrap up some stuff. Like he kind of like retconned out that whole uh you know Norman Osborn slept with Gwen Stacy thing. He's like, oh, oh no, that was yeah. he was manipulated. That was just an old man's sick fantasy. He never touched Gwen. But no, yeah, I think well, like, I was happy about that. Yeah. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. but uh, I think he said uh, like he was trying to explain it where like I think Mephisto didn't want Peter and Mary Jane to be together because if they were, their da their daughter would be like a thorn in Mephisto's side or something like that. So mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, it's, so it's like, oh okay, so you really like showed? Oh yeah, Mephisto really mm -hmm. won in that case. Yeah. 
I just I had a hard a hard time understanding Mephisto's stake and all. Of yeah. That. But I was gonna say we could cover that story here uh, on a Marvel Tales probably because I don't think Loaf wants to come within ten miles of that story. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. yeah. I, don't know. I might pass on that. Maybe when we run out of some other things to talk yeah. about. All right. Uh, should we get to the last? Mm. Yes. And uh, yeah, it's funny because I think uh, the first the, the first issue of part one when we covered that that's one of my fa- that that's a favorite cover of mine. And I think this last one is a, yeah another good cover. So might be so my good. favorite out of this run. Yeah, with the reflection of Geist in yeah, the claws. Yeah, <laughs> not only in the claws but also in the um, the little uh, housing. The little oh, she- yeah, the, yeah. The sheaths for his claws. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Just the coloring. It's almost like it's in the dark. Yeah. Mm. So good. All right. So we'll, all right, kids. We're gonna wrap this up in Wolverine 23, April 1990. Endings. Uh oh. This time burn pencils and inks his own stuff. Yes. Oh yeah. Back to the classic burn look for this one. He's like, let's bring it on home. I'll make it myself. Yep. <laughs> Uh, though the infected body of President through the uh, infected body of President Caridad, Spore lives again and is now growing at a monumental rate. This deviant living weapon is bent on consuming every living thing on the planet, and now that it has attempted to consume Wolverine, the only thing that stands in its way is the young mutant uh, come re- revolutionary La Bandera. Uh, before the creature can attack the girl, Wolverine manages to break free and begin slicing into the creature while ordering everyone to get back, telling Roughhouse to take Sister Salvation with him. When Sister Salvation refuses to go back, she convinces Logan that perhaps her healing touch can help them defeat the creature. Agreeing to give it a try, Wolverine and Bandera to work together to incapacitate Spore long enough for Sister Salvation to get close. Sure enough, as soon as she begins using her healing powers on Spore, the creature begins to dissolve. She ultimately destroys Spore, but it comes at the cost of her hands being heavily burned and the loss of her healing powers. With the threat of Spore ended and the news of Caridad's death, spreading the revolution, uh, everyone begins to part company. Roughhouse decides to stay behind and help Sister Salvation rebuild her mission and help her in treating her son Paulo heal from the poisons injected in him by Geist. Logan decides to pay Geist a personal visit himself. He tracks him down to the mansion he was stationed in at the capital city of Tierra Verde. There he confronts Geist and informs him that he burned all his papers, money, and remaining cocaine supply and informed the locals of Caridad's death. Wolverine then uses his claws to slice open, slice, to slice up Geist's cybernetic bodysuit and leaves the withered old man to be taken away by medics. Mm-hmm. And be made and be made Tierra Verde's first political prisoner. Later, Logan learns that Geist was released and ushered out of the country, and is angry that the new government allowed this to happen. He confronts them, and they only wash it off as an extradition matter, causing Wolverine to storm out angrily. Bandera follows him, uh, and, Wol- and Logan warns her that this is the sort of thing she will have to watch out for in the future, and wishes her luck in defending her people. On his way out of town, he's confronted by CIA, CIA agent Jake uh, Jack Basco. Uh, Logan learns that Geist, another info dump. Logan learns that Geist was their informant, and the CIA was involved in the whole operation to remove Caridad from power, finding his cocaine dealings embarrassing to American interests. The fact that the CIA would work with an ex-Nazi disgusts Logan. Basco leaves with him with some parting advice that sometimes there are worse enemies than your old enemies. So, yes, this Basco showed up twice in the beginning and now at the end, both times to info dump. <laughs> uh, uh, returning to Mad Report, Logan breaks into the home of General Coy and finds one sim- single sample of Caridad's tainted cocaine crop. He then captures Koi and also Prince Baron and takes them down into the sewers of Madripoor. There he explains to them the dangers of the cocaine and figures out that Koi knew this and intended to use it on his rival, Tiger Tiger, in the hopes that she, uh, that she might go mad and kill Prince Baran. After destroying the final sample of the cocaine, he then tells the prince and Koi to run for it as he will hunt them through the sewers. 
Both men flee, but Wolverine doesn't follow after them. Satisfied with the idea of them crawling out of the sewers covered in filth. And st- <laughs> uh, uh. Instead, <laughs> Wolverine returns to Australia to be reunited with his fellow X-Men, his family. Geist, meanwhile, arrives at Washington, D.C. to the safe house provided to him by the United States. I love this ending. By the United States government. There he is confronted by, and I guess, kids, uh, Holocaust survivor Magneto. Yes. Who has been tipped off about Geist's loca- location. Magneto explains that he is a mutant master of magnetism and that Geist used to work in the concentration camp during World War II that saw the death of his wife. He, off- he offers to speak, quote unquote, to Geist about it in private. <laughs> All right. I love that ending. I was just like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And you see the little toy robot that kind of lifts up in the air and then falls down and smashes into pieces. Yeah. Oh, hmm. A Nazi, a Nazi in a metal suit. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. Now I, I read about Geist after this because I was curious if he had oh. any other appearances. And he does. He returns somehow. He survives whatever Magneto does to him, which I think is brilliant that they don't they don't show any of that. Yeah, but but somehow he survives that, and he next shows up in there was this thing, and I didn't read it. Maybe you did, Phil. It's called X Men: True Friends. I don't. It, think so. it had I think it was Rachel Summers and Kitty Pride together in that one, and I don't know if it was a mini series or something like that. But he appeared in a few issues of that, and then he appeared again after that in uh, Captain America: Hail Hydra. That whole stuff. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing this. Yeah, it says, well, spoilers, kids, it says he dies in Captain America, Hail Hydra, number five in mm. 2011. So, yeah, so that's that's the end of Geist, apparently. But then again, we thought it was the end of Geist in 1989 when Magneto had, or 1990 yes. when Magneto had that little talk with him. <laughs> so he could yet still return. Yeah. Oh, yeah, again, I'm, I mean, especially a cyborg, you could always say. Yeah, mm. you know, they're always totally. waiting to bring everyone back. Yeah, and of course it makes sense because Geist in German means ghost. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm just reading the uh, summaries here. Yeah, of, of course. Yes, it says do the exoskeleton. Geist is extremely long lived, being well over 100 years old. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the Hail Hydra thing makes sense because again, it's like. Oh, did I read that? I don't think I read that. I got to read that because uh, I wonder if that. I wonder if uh, Steve Rogers encountered him in World War II at all. That would make sense. Oh yeah, that is true. Yeah. Uh, oh, that would be another thing. Even if he's dead, I mean, you can do World War II flashbacks and stuff. Yeah, show him when he was a younger guy. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I'd love to see that. Oh, you know what I wanted to bring up to you. Um. I don't know if you saw there's a new mini series out. Only the first issue came out like a few weeks ago, but uh it's uh Matt what was it? It's a Wolverine Madripoor Knights, but it's basically it it's, takes place around the, the, that uncanny X Men two sixty eight. So it's like mm. mm-hmm. once again when, when, uh, Wolverine, Captain America, and Black Widow are gonna team up. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Interesting. So it, yeah, it's a mini series. Uh, yeah, because uh, yeah, because like I said, it's set around close to that time of uh, Uncanny X Men two sixty eight. So, oh, okay, yeah, I'd like to check that out. And it, so, of course, yeah, Jubilee and uh, Psylocke were in there too. I don't know mm. how mm-hmm. big part they're gonna play, but yeah, mm, I'd definitely be interested in that. Mm. Oh yeah, well, of course, there's multiple covers, but uh, yeah, that's what I'm trying to get in clear there's the cover in number one. Oh, nice yeah i love that yeah yeah i'll definitely be interested in checking that out yeah i'll let you know what i think but yeah uh, like i said only issue one was out so far so oh yeah of course oh yeah there's there's multiple variants on issue what <laughs> oh god yeah <laughs> i can imagine but... yeah i can't wait to see what they do with that i'm trying to uh well, that's the other thing I'm trying. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I think it might be. Yeah, it is. Uh, Chris Claremont is writing it too. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very cool. And pencils by Edgar Salazar. So. 
I don't think I'm familiar with his stuff, but I I'm definitely intrigued. Let's put yes. it that way. Yeah, picking up in the window, the all-time classic, uh, Uncanny X-Men 268, throw to a brand new adventure. Uh, when a secret weapon brings Captain America to Madripoor, the trio team up. Uh, you've been waiting decades for will finally come to pass. The mission brings Logan and Black Widow into a race against time against a multitude of foes, including the hand. The hand, nice. Mm, so. Very cool. Yeah, I'll definitely be interested in checking that out. Yeah, yeah that's neat. So yeah, kids, if you yeah, that's the, that's current Wolverine stuff, and then in the regular Wolverine book, the Saber Tooth War is going on. Uh, hmm. Saber Tooth and a bunch of his uh, multiversal, uh, basically build a multiversal army of him, of himself. So. Oh yikes! They basically tra- trashed a bunch of Logan's friends, so he's out for blood. Didn't that get some type of parental advisory oh. warning because of the I violence? Think- the- I think Russell was telling. Oh that. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't want to spoil too much, but uh, Sabretooth cuts up at least one character and like spells out a message for Logan with the body parts. Oh, okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it is. It is bloody, but yeah, it, it, it's good. Uh, yeah. Oh, because uh, Lilf was telling me because we were talking Wolverine. She said, "Oh, she's like, oh, that sexual tension between Wolverine and Sabretooth." I said, "Not in that. <laughs> Not in that." <laughs> <laughs> Well, the, the, if there's different multiversal versions of Saber Two, there's one of them's going to have some sexual tension with Logan. I think there was even like a female female one, so there could be. <laughs> uh, but she wasn't a redhead, so I don't. I don't. Oh, no, well, I think he's going to go for it. <laughs> mm. Well, still, Tiger Tiger wasn't a redhead. Ah, uh, true, true, true. And yeah, he was all over her in the beginning of this story. I shouldn't say that. I mean, yeah, he, yeah, he likes redheads. Yeah, he does like Tiger Tiger and some of the dark haired ones. I was gonna say, I guess no blondes, but I don't know. It seemed like there was a point there. Was he flirting with like Carol Danvers for like two seconds, or was he? Oh, uh, what era was that? I forgot. I I thought there was, but hmm, I don't remember that. Oh, you know what? We need to get a Ray crossover in here. We could uh that do some something with Jessica Drew because she she did pop in and out yes. of Wolverine book, yeah. I was thinking too earlier where it's this is the 50th birthday of Wolverine. Mm-hmm. Next year, I think we're going to have the 50th birthday of Moon Knight. Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I if my memory serves me correctly. So I think we should do a crossover with We Are the Night. Yes. I mean, Into the Night. I I was, yes, we are. Yes. I've, I've, got, I've got all the nights crossed up. Into the Night. The Moon Knight podcast. Well, you discovered, uh, you discovered the the guy. I guess. Uh, hold on. Yeah, you're right. I think it is seventy. Uh, where I think it, it will be next. Seventy five. Yeah. It's what Werewolf by Night. 20, werewolf by Night. Twenty. Is it twenty? Wait, what is she number? Is it thirty two? Thirty two. Why am I thinking twenty nine? Uh, I look at the poster on my wall. It's the cover. <laughs> oh, you have the cover on the wall. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep, 1975. Yeah, release August 1975. So yeah, nice. next yeah next year will be Moon Knight. Yeah, I was thinking we should do a crossover with Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. Yes. Get some Moon Knight action going. Yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to look through some uh, yeah good Moon Knight stuff. Oh, uh, well, there's a ton. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm I'm just trying to think of like, hmm. Is there anything Ray hasn't what, covered yet? But what no West matter. Coast Avengers? Oh yeah. Um, Secret Secret Avengers. Mark Specter um, Moon. <laughs> <laughs> There's oh. some Axe of Vengeance stuff in there too. Yes. And, and Mark Specter Moon Knight. Yeah. Basically, yeah. I'm basically down for any Moon Knight if it's not Bendis. Yes. Likewise. Um. Yeah. Likewise, I avoid that Bendis, one. Bendis, Bendis. There's a oh, couple I, other ones I'm not as fond of, but that one is the stinker. I still, I still want to uh, have like a big uh, episode where we put Bendis on trial and everyone just like uh, <laughs> presents evidence. <laughs> he would never agree to it. Oh, he won't be here. We'll try him in abstentia. But yeah, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. He, I know he wouldn't show up. But yeah, you know, just have you know, you know, like. Uh, have someone 
present, you know, like, oh, you know, exhibit A is Moon Knight run. Exhibit B is Superman. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. I mean, exhibit C is of some of his Avengers stuff. Cause I know. Yeah. Exhibit C Avengers stuff. Yeah. New Avengers. Dr- drove yeah. one time Avengers fan will from reading Avengers after that, you know, once. Yeah. I mean, it, it was to me, the biggest insult of that was just the fact that you had just come from this glorious run with Kurt Busiek. Mm. And at first it was George Perez. And then some other amazing artists took his place after that amazing series that I still think is gold. You come after that and then and then you just kind of shit on it. I just <laughs> I don't know. I it's still it bothers me too. I, I'm with Will in that camp. There was a definite yeah. shift that took place. Well again, in... it just it, it just seemed like he went for the the easy, you know, just like the you know money grab where it's like, I know, let's put Spider Man and Wolverine on the Avengers. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Where I still maintain that that could have been done in the ultimate line Mm, mm -hmm. and it would have been fine it would have been completely palatable and it would have been great yeah 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 i still i still think having wolverine on the avengers is stupid i do i'll go to my grave maintaining that position especially the same team as steve rogers because yeah 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 it's like, just how, it's ridiculous. How, how many men have you killed? Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Rod is gonna be fine with having you on the Avengers. Okay. Yeah. And he's a member of five, oh, so five different teams now: the Avengers, X Force, X Men, like no. New Fantastic I, I just, Four. Yeah. No. That's what I'm saying. Yes, because Spider Man and Wolverine weren't up to anything every month. Yeah, you know, weren't up to twenty other things every month. <laughs> right. And as we see in this story, like Wolverine's doing all this globe trotting, he's going from Madripoor to Tierra Verde to back back to Madripoor again at the end. Like he's all over the place. And I get he's supposed to be this like closed off guy, this like mysterious figure, but I'm just like, like he he would disappear on the X Men and then come back, and like he wouldn't tell them where 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 he was at. But like, why wouldn't you tell them about this? Yeah, right. be like, be like, yeah, I try, you know, I was trying to help a country, you know, the, you know, right, this country get freedom, and you know, I find I sentient cocaine, and <laughs> I I took down a Nazi cyborg, you know, <laughs> with a shaving fetish. <laughs> I fought Namor, one of Namor's arch enemies, underwater, who almost drowned me. You know, no big deal or anything, bub. Yeah. What a what a Namor's enemies. Yeah, Tiger Shark. There's nothing to get wet about anyway. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. you know what I was waiting for at the end of this story, though. The one thing I think they robbed us of when uh, Wolverine finally confronts Geist. I was waiting for him to pop those claws and be like, "You like to shave? I'll give you a clue." <laughs> yeah. How about you get a close shave this? Although time? he kind of did, cutting that, cutting that, this yes. cyborg armor off. Yeah, yeah, that was essentially. I, what happened. Yeah. I loved how he had that little, that one little. Um, it was almost like a cable or a piece of wire sticking out of his shoulder that was where his arm was supposed to connect, oh, <laughs> just yeah. kind of wiggling around in the air all impotently. You, uh, I'll get you, I'll get you for this Wolverine. <laughs> oh, it was great. Absolutely great. I love how over the fact of this story, the course of this story, rather, we, we have the fact that this is a really unconscionable, like he views uh, humans as basically just lab rats to be mm-hmm. experimented on and has maintained this view and harbored this view of human beings for decades because he was a Nazi scientist oh, who yeah. committed all these horrible atrocities against people uh of the Jewish faith in concentration camps during world war two. So he, you've had all of these issues to build him up as being this really atrocious, awful villain, like this nasty piece of work. And then at the end, you know, you have Wolverine kind of take him down and everything. And then you kind of get the gut punch that, no, he was actually put there by the CIA. He's been working as a, as a, like a triple agent, blah, blah, blah. And he's loose. He's free now. Like all of Wolverine's actions, it appeared like they didn't amount to anything. But yeah. then you have the little, 
the brilliant little piece of Magneto at the end, which just solidified this as being one of my favorite Wolverine stories. I just, I thought it was a brilliant way to close out everything. Um, yeah, and the whole thing really is just really well written. The Archie Goodwin script, just on, on all the issues, is really good. And, and the pacing, too, of this story is really well done, even with the two-issue Acts of Vengeance stuff added in. Oh, yeah. It didn't feel like it, it detracted from things. It didn't feel like it, it slowed the pace down or revved up the pace either. Um, it felt like it, it fit perfectly in amongst everything else. Yeah, the acts of vengeance thing, yeah, it didn't seem like it was like tacked on. It it was like very organic to the story. I I would go so far as to say I thought it was more organic here than even in the uncanny X-Men stuff. Mm, like definitely. I like, like I like the Psylocke stuff, but I'm just like, oh well, it's like yeah, the Mandarin got his hands on her. Oh, there's your acts of vengeance, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. There's your yeah. next book. There's your there's your acts of vengeance crossover. Yeah. And the the Mandarin, like even I think we even talked about in that episode, didn't even really need need to be there, and they they even created a character that had the same image, mm. like the same physical image of him in that story, so that they could use him in X Men <laughs> without it being the Mandarin. Yeah. <laughs> I, I forget what his name was, but I I, I think it, but, I think they just made it the Mandarin so it would count as an Axe of Vengeance. You know, Claremont was yeah. just like. Okay, the Mandarin's here. It's a man. Right. So, yeah, it's yeah. otherwise it didn't have to be the Mandarin. Yeah, but originally it was. I, I think he probably meant it to be somebody else, some high-ranking member of the Yakuza or something like that. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm surprised. Though. So, like, yeah, guy shows up two more times at least. But I, I mean, they left it open and then to bring him back. It would have been great if they would have like uh, brought him back as like a big X villain, you know? Because oh, totally. Know, Again, at least here he's been humbled by Wolverine and Magneto. So yeah, you know, maybe, makes perfect sense. He'd harbor a grudge. Maybe maybe uh Magneto rips him apart, and so it'd be great if he came back. He's like, oh, I rebuilt myself with like Sentinel Tech or something. Yeah, or, yeah, or like the um the techno organic virus. Yes. Yeah. Just definitely. Like, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna hunt down mutants, and he's like, you know, to experiment on them because he. Yeah. Had, my evil Nazi scientist. Yeah, make a new version of the legacy virus or something Ooh, like that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And also I read that La Bandera didn't appear again after this. What? This was her only appearance, yeah, which I thought was a real wasted opportunity because oh, she was yeah. really cool. Yeah, she was really cool. And how often do you see like a Cuban superhero? Like it's exactly and at 1989 it was rare, but unfortunately, 30 years later, I think it's still rare. Like <laughs> I can't think of any Cuban superheroes. <laughs> I thought of anything. It would, you know, it was the night, you know, the nineties were starting. I thought they'd jump at the chance, like, oh, look at this cute, this cute female superhero. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And she's got a neat power that's kind yeah. of different. You know, it's unique. It's it's not your typical. Although storytelling wise, is that kind of limiting, or is it, is it just like, oh yeah, her power is going to work in like political hotspots and stuff? <laughs> right. And... She can only go to places where, like, people need some type of revolutionary action taking place. Yeah. I mean, unless they kind of adapted her powers, just like, you know, she can feed on people's willpower or something, you know, they could have. Yeah. Or maybe in despondent areas, like, um, like crime ridden parts mm -hmm. of the city or stuff where people are really down. She can kind of rally them up and give them hope and courage and things like that. Yeah. Or even just like, you know, she's always worked with mutants because, you know, it's, uh, she feed you know she's feeding on their feelings of being downtrodden and stuff mm. yeah they're constantly marginalized so they have a constant need to feel inspired yeah exactly right all right yeah. Uh, but yeah this was a good pick justin both of these this yes, thank you yeah, i'm glad you liked it I was like, yeah. I was like, wow, seven is. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't like make it like it's a uh, you know put a border at the top, you know, mm. in this this arc because again it was like seven issues. So I'm just like, yeah, this could fit into a trade paperback and read read really well because it's very self contained. There's not a whole lot of stuff from previous or from the stuff that came after it. Yeah, they didn't set up a lot of stuff for after this. <laughs> Because they had already done that earlier in this series. Like there was at least what one or two like arcs that yeah. you know, what is it, the Genestone and uh was it Spurs? yes the one, yeah, yeah. 
And there was one with the silver samurai. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, especially 89 going into 90, I'm sure, I'm surprised they didn't take the chance to like, oh, that's this check out this seven part mega cross. Although I wonder if they just did that too, because it's like acts of vengeance was there. So, Oh, true. Yeah. They didn't want to have uh, two different storylines kind of converging at the same time. Yeah. Or they didn't want people to, to be afraid. Like if you were collecting all the acts of vengeance stuff to jump in and, you know, but right. Here, come in and check out Wolverine. And then if you like it, <laughs> stay for a while. Yes. Read the rest of the story. All yeah, right. Glad you liked it, Phil. Yeah, yes. a, yeah, yeah. It was a good this one. is one that I, I like introducing to Wolverine fans because not a lot of people know about this one. A lot of people remember it. Kind of fell between, fell by the wayside, and I think it's a great little story. That's why I said it makes me want to go back and like fill in the gaps of some of these this early mm. Wolverine stuff I haven't read. Yeah, I want to do that too. I wonder, if, I wonder if there's an epic collection of this first year, first couple of years of Wolverine out. If there yeah. isn't, there should be. <laughs> think because i know i i got at least a vol volume of two it's even earlier i mean they're out of print now but like you remember when they did those black and white essentials i think they did yes that. they did print some of those first early wolverines I forget okay how far they got but yeah hmm. all right anything else justin no i think we covered all of the the birthday shenanigans for 50 year old logan he's looking pretty good for 50 oh yeah and again, I mean, we'll be doing more X-Men stuff through the year, so... You'll, mm, oh, definitely. I'll be back, along with his buddies, so... I think our next classic X-Men episode is... It's the Executioner? The... Or is it the yes, Executioner's X song? No, it's X the Executioner. Uh, remember nice. those issues? Yeah, you picked those yeah. For the, yeah, the end of May, so... The end of May, that's right. Okay. I can remember when that was. Nice. Yeah, oh, I picked some uh, some appearances of the Executioner, the villain from 30 years ago. Yes. Oh, it's going to roll in nicely because, yeah, the last week of May, that's gonna we're going to do that uh, stuff, uh, that episode on the Executioner. And then the first two weeks of June, our two-part Extinction Agenda. Extinction Agenda. Yes. yes. Very nice. X-Men, X-Factor, and New Mutants. Yeah. I'm excited about that one, Phil. Yes. So, yeah, make sure you send your thoughts on those. But, again, in April, we're going to do uh, just, yes, Justin's picks for my birthday month. Uh, and, again, you're going to get an extra Marvel Tales next month because uh, we're going to do uh, Quasar's Cosmos and Collision in two parts for the first week of April. With and special then, guest. Will yeah, Allred. special guest, Mr. Will Allred, yes. Captain America 348 through 350 after that. Mighty Thor 406 through 408. And Iron Man 281 through 284 featuring the first appearance of the War Machine armor. That's right. Can't Which wait. I know is a favorite of yours. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, yes. Yeah, so, send us your thoughts on all of those uh, for the Marvel Tales and X-Men Classics. Email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And remember, you can find all things Capes and Lunatics episodes, social media, merchandise. Uh, help support us buy some merch or uh, go to that Cash App link if you just want to send us some money. Make it rain. And, of course, the Patreon. because And uh, once again, if you want to hear uh, me and Lil talking stuff other than comics, completely uncensored, uh, check it out there. Uh, we just reviewed the AVN Awards. Uh, when you hear this in March, you will... Uh, you should probably by now you've heard Lil Hellfire's conspiracy theories, some of her favorites. Mm. So. I'm looking forward to that one in particular. Oh yeah, I think she she has to like make a list because she has so many. <laughs> Keep them organized. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so you can find that at everything I just mentioned at uh, TubeSpace .io slash Capes and Lunatics Podcast Network. That's TubeSpace .io slash Capes and Lunatics Podcast Network. More vicious and brutal than ever. <laughs> All right. Now on to this Justin the Owl. Uh, mm -hmm. The king of podcasting. You can hear him here every week, either on Marvel Tales or X-Men Classics or both. Uh, you can hear him twice a month on Electric Mullet, the Superman podcast with me and Tyler Patrick. You can hear him monthly on uh, what the end of the month on We Are the Night. <gasps> the Batman, the podcast. Batman podcast. Uh, talking uh, all things Asriel, uh, and then also once a month with me and Russell on Energon Universe, talking all the new Transformers and G.I. Joe stuff from Image Comics, 
Look, that isn't all. Uh, so That's not all. Justin, what else are you doing? <laughs> you can also find me and Russell over at Gamma Charge, the strongest podcast there is, where three times a month we talk about the Incredible Hulk and the sensational She-Hulk. And we also have a Patreon, so do check that out. We do bonus episodes every month for certain tiers. And if you pledge anything, you will get a mention on the show. And also, twice a month, Russell and I are joined by our friend, the High Priest of Khonshu himself, Ray, for Predator and Prey, the Yucha podcast, where we talk about Predator comics of the past and the present, the new comics from Marvel and the classic ones from Dark Horse. Russell and I also have Gone the Form of Man, the Etrigan podcast, once a month, where we are going back to the 70s with Jack Kirby's classic Demon series, which we are covering in its entirety. And last but not least, my solo podcast, The Lost Library of Legends, is still chugging along, and in March, my spotlight episode will be on a 90s title from 1994 from marvel called black wolf we're going back to the 90s here bitch <laughs> i'm gonna eat this up with a fork and spoon <laughs> oh that's yep. naughty. i'll be covering the whole black wolf series and an issue of thunderstrike oh yeah because that was the introduction of black wolf and two issues of Daredevil, in which Black Wolf makes a guest appearance. Oh, yeah. so, all I kinds of stuff. In love that it. <laughs> uh, Ooh, hold on, let me grab a handful of this. <laughs> Is this man going to stop podcasting anytime soon? I don't uh, think so. <laughs> Doesn't seem that way. Yeah. Superior puss. <laughs> I'm a sucker for a guy with a powerful rod. Stop him, kids. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us for these last two episodes for the whole month. Logan Wolverine's 50th anniversary. Yes. Happy birthday, Logan. Have you guys covered his first appearance yet? It wasn't a, in the. Uh... No, actually, we haven't. Oh, you guys are yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. All right, kids. If you haven't learned by now, don't be so tame. <laughs> we'll control your life, literally. <laughs> we'll turn you into a monster. <laughs> Alright kids, I'll be back next time. Schnicked out.